All right, guys, exciting. Um, I'm about to pick up a new temporary machine. You've seen by the title what it is, and I'm actually really excited about it because it's a machine I really like. Um, it's about two miles down the road, um, 30 pound Bosch Classics 1200 Express. I can't wait to see this. And you're watching Florence Ballad A3060 on film. Seller's given me the address. Uh, let's go. Uh, I've already got footage from a previous washing machine pickup I did, and it's pretty much in the same area, so I'm just going to use that. So you're going to see some motorway footage, and that's it. Um, I will see you when we come back. I'll bring the camera with me. Let's go. Perfect, mate. goodness mate um i have never felt so much more dirtier than that oh god that machine is a minger it stinks but <coughs> mm. oh i forgot to say my mini has had a service recently so that's a new oil filter put in an elephant and just a regular checkup. Oh god, I had to unplumb that all myself. He wasn't expecting the fact that he had to help me. Thankfully, it was a. Oh my god. Oh, it smells like a. It smells like a sewer. But hey, it's got the drum. It's not got the band in the middle. I think it's a WAE model. It's got a ripped door seal, so I'll order a new one as soon as I get in. 
but it won't be, I think, <coughs> I won't be putting it in straight away because I've got to film the six. Oh, God. The car is smelling. He's definitely, he's got four more powder though, but. <coughs> yeah, let's take the quickest route home. All right. Who's annoying me? All right, let's go. Let's go. Oh, one hour to work for me. Right, I'll see you guys when we get home. There she is. It's a WFO 2467GB slash 01 8505. May 2005 this is. It's coal for lonely model as well. I didn't actually realise they did coal for lonely in this. Um, oh god. Yeah, leave it on there. More water come out. I'm gonna empty the filter here as well. Absolutely. She's going straight, she's gonna go straight in the house. Uh, so yeah, it's only a door seal. Hopefully I thought it'd be something like a tub seal leaking but obviously we'll run the machine on that this machine is going to receive like 20 maintenance washers so let's look underneath got that got those shock absorbers the webs here and there helicopter and a robinson uh i think this is a ce set motor Ooh, some rusting around that band for the concrete block as well but overall an easy machine to fix. How about the feet, are they? Ah, oh, they look rusted, these feet. Oh, that one's fine, this one isn't. What did Phil say is a good thing to do? Like bang it with a hammer, isn't it? Yeah, the top foot is... Yeah, the top foot is just... Yeah, that, is, that won't budge, so... I'll have to uh, see about that, what we can do. All right, let's try and get her out. It's an all right drive there, though. Oh, well, yeah, loads of grease on the shocks, though, which is good. So it's not, they're not dried out. It's a light, like, sort of lightweight machine, but bulky at the same time. A bit yellowed, but what do you expect from a essentially 18-year-old machine? See the condition of the machine here. Look, very dirty. Got Love Heart stickers. Mm, not bad. That's the problem. The 5p coin. At least it's been using. That's your problem. Is that door or seal? I'm gonna. I'm gonna on the uh, fil Undo the filter. There we are. Oh yeah, I forgot they, they detach, don't they, like a tree. That way then I'm not bringing any of that into the house. The water. This is going to receive like 20 boil washers this thing. Oh, that's 
water staining on the top. <coughs> Something enjoyable to Normally I wouldn't have gone for one of these temporarily, but the thing is it's a 1200 model and not a 1400 model like the one I actually want. And plus it's a classic, it's not an XL model. Uh, thought I might as well have a go with it and see what we can do. 30, 30 pound, so it's actually a little bit of rust there we could touch off on. <coughs> I'm give it a surface clean and this, that's all that's already come off it. Absolute minger, but everything else will require a soaking through. Annoyingly, it's cold for lonely, so it's not going to blast itself with hot water. But hey, here's what it is. Mm. I'll, just get a, I'll just get a toothpick for that to get all that cleaned. Look at that, even in there there's dirt. But however, the real machine I like is the Siemens. I've always preferred the Siemens versions of these. The 1600 one, or the 1800 IQ, but as I say, for something temporary, and to make some money off, they're good machines. Especially around here. Um, it's like the Fisher and Pike, or people know how good they are, I mean, which have done this amount of time, and it's not really, it's only been just subjected to a poor kitchen condition, but apart from that. A lot of time, people are not throwing machines out because they're grubby. This is definitely, you can tell this is coalful though, because it's had all the lime scale marks on it as well. These don't come out, do they? These knobs. Well, they probably do. We've got to take the face off. It's going to be a new door seal. Maybe they're easy to fit on these. That Chris done a tutorial on that, I think. Uh, who am I having for one of these? The door glass, I'll get some glass cleaner for. Glass cleaner, I use this invisible window, right? And it foams up, and you don't need to wipe it off. So, look. dries itself off. It'll just dissolve anything on there. ASMR. Could use it on this side as well. That's clunky dials, if I remember. And that is not variable while spinning. And it's got a countdown. Start, pre-wash, reduced ironing, rinse plus. I think the XL models had the reduced, no, the Max models what had the uh, reduced time on them. Here's the new door seal. Top. And yes, this model does not have the cascade fill. It does have where it would have been. That's quite funny to see that because that's why they would have it on the other models. So, following Chris's video, I'm going to keep these parts aside where they can be given a clean. Does this come off as well? Yeah, it does. Lovely. 
place the screws on. Seized up, sometimes you find on these machines when they're so dirty. And grime gets in these. That's the emergency drain hose. Anything else holding it on? No. That should prize away. There's nothing there holding that on. I'm just going to work it away. There we, there we go. Oof, yuck. That definitely needs a clean. Jeez. Oh, another one in the pile. Oof. Nasty. That is definitely liquid detergent that's seeped in there. All that will need a scrub as well. Just keep this down to try and capture any dirt. I should actually filming because I've done that so many times. If you want a proper tutorial, guys, please look at Chris's video, the laundry centre. And as I say, my videos are not tutorials, they're just showing you what I do. I'm not a qualified engineer or anything, so, so I know that these are all to do the front panel, but this one is a different size, so I'll keep it there. And what I do is I keep them on the top of the machine in the order that they are hit, so I know it goes like that. When you've got a machine dealing with a lot of that's probably from where it's leaked. Remember when we got it out of the car? And it's all rust on the bottom. That's what this is from, from where it's leaked. So we'll clean the rest of the cabinet. Well. Where's the retaining band? It's here. And where's the spring? Spring has been located there. It doesn't matter if we rip this new seal, uh, this seal, just to undo it to the other seal. Some as well, this gets stuck on from all the grime. That's there. It's good because replacing the door seal saves me a huge hassle of trying to clean all that and everything. There's a retaining band, might give that a little clean up. That is razor sharp. Like Chris said, he's cut himself a few times. I've cut myself on the inside lid of uh, the knife I threw once because I decided to move the machine with the lid off and my finger went like that, sliced it. But I really want to know how on earth that happened. That right, is one massive rip, but he's let all kinds of rubbish go through that. Oh, yeah, there's tissue and everything. That is a massive rip, that is. Well, at least it was a door seal and nothing else. Right, now my model's got the interlock that pops out. Hasn't got the screws on it or anything, which is unusual. So, how do I, do I have to push that in or? Do I push that in or what does that do? Okay, or well, do I leave that on then? Yeah, all right. Um, weird, because Chris worked on this exact same model and it had screws there. A screw with a white like, disc on it. I just got little bits that pop on. So unless I do that, what we'll do then is remove the front panel really carefully with that salon. Let's get the drawer. That, oh, that's a bit loose and that needs a clean. I don't really want to press that down with my hand because it's all kind of, oh, look at that. Let's 
put you off your bloody dinner is. Lordy hell, I need to really get in that. Got a screw there. Wow, well, those torque screws are all one size, but that ain't going to come out on its own. Right, they can just stay there for the time being. There we go. Very gently, because I know the interlock wire is still connected to that. That's a very weird looking interlock. <coughs> well, right, let's get out this thing. Chris says, grip it. Oh, hang on, I've got it. Now these do, as I know, have to take the ping off. Uh, controlled that nicely. All right, this has come out in two bits, it says. There you go. Bloody hell. Oh, that really don't look good. That's where it's been leaking. That's still. Maybe. What a messy job. There you go. That's where that's been leaking all this time. Right. right in the bin. Let's give this area a clean up first, and then we'll go from there. Let's get that in with her. So just, just make sure that when the seal goes back on, it's a nice. Clean lip. Let's worry too much about the drum rim because that will clean up and do a maintenance wash. I'm just using some hot water and washing up liquid. So be advisable to run a rinse after this to test it as well. Um, so when I do the towel wash, stuff's going to be a little bit sudsy. No. Looks like he's had this in use for quite a while like this. That is quite a serious hole in that drawing behave. We'll try not to punch any out of the tub. See, no, it's not blood. Go all the way around. That just makes it <coughs> drain holes at the six o'clock position. That will line up with here. Oh, Mum's destroying the sofas. Stop. Usually, they're relative. They'll go relatively easy if you've. Try not to say any words that will trigger Dorian to say anything. <laughs> These, but like Chris says, you can always adjust it. Bloody hell, that's got to be the easiest seal I've ever put on. <coughs> and then just turn it if you need to. That's bang on at six o'clock position. Wow, that's got to be the easiest seal I've ever put on. Indecent ones, uh, we'll be struggling with them for a while. Right, now this needs a little clean up, so it's gonna. Look. What? Spider? No, sorry. It was a hair. These can be a bit of a nightmare to put on. As Chris says, there is a method. You can laugh at me while I do this for a bit, I'm trying to fight to put this on. I always struggle with these. It does need two hands. Unfortunately, I'm all on my own, so excuse me, my dear. It's just going to have to come this way. 
because I'm gonna have to sit in front of the machine to do this. All right, let's move all this. Never mind. Can't be moved. For a tall guy tries to get into a small space. So. I think the worst uh, retaining band I ever had to put on away was the Siemens IQ500 washer dryer. Hands down was the worst because the way it was like this, but something with the way the concrete weight came over, it didn't allow you to get your hand in there. I want to put that bit at the top because I don't want any more. Yes, yes. Bosch, nil, me, one. All right. Nice and tight. All right, fold that in now. Out of the way, we can put the front panel back on. I've also given that clean as well, the front panel. There you go. Yeah. Look at that. There you go. Because you've got water damage on your washing machine lid. Especially these Bosch's, which have, uh, I think, insulated lids to them. You think stuff. So you that, have to do more and then... Yeah, because that will increase the selling point, because uh, even though this is under a worktop, people will look at that and be like, well, why are you selling it for that much money when you've got some damage to it there? Yep. And we'll give this retaining band a clean pop on that back on. Anyway, I'll say it's quite... It's nice getting machines that are just fully working for the moment you get them. But it is also nice selling something that you've worked on. That was my worry about trying to be able to sell this machine was just uh, getting on top. It's basically where it's been under a draining board, I think. And it looked like the sink had been leaking or something. Um, I'm going to remove the lid as well and get whatever's under the, as well, around the sides. Um, and obviously water's just soaked into the lid the whole time. Wait. Might not be perfect, but it'll do. It'll do far better than one. Not perfect, but it's going to, it's come up a lot more cleaner than it originally did. So what I'm going to do now is going to put the front panel back to the machine. I'm going to do it that way. I'll also be taking the door off its hinge to clean around that as well. I just want to make sure this works. Okay, because it will actually see. If you want to see how sharp it is, let it slice right through that. So the seal comes back out. And then where we've lubricated it, it'll go all over the edge. Feed it outwards. There's always different methods, but I always try to stick with the ones that always work the best. The ones that I use by most other, you know, engine, that I use by engineers and whatnot. Because they usually be the quicker way to do it. But as uh, Chris was saying, if you haven't worked on the machine before, you, know, you, ca you can, if you've worked on these, do it via the front panel uh, without removing them. But to make sure that sits in nice and evenly. It might be a bit out of shape at first, it just needs to be used. But that, to me, I can see. Yeah, I'm satisfied with that. I always say, try and maybe drop a washing up liquid between the fingers and then run the band through it. Normally, a recess, some of them have a recess where this spring bit sits. Now, Chris was able to put this on. Some of the here. Ours was located here, so I'm going to put it at the bottom. He was able to put that on just by using his fingers. Which amazed me because normally you end up having to use a screwdriver for this. Ah, maybe not. I don't know, 
and then this is where we start doing a silly idea. Oh, my finger's actually hurting that much. Well, just keep trying. If it can be done this way, then why not? Yes, yes, yes. All right, make sure it's all in. That's on, the door closes. These do always feel a bit tough on their door seal, but it is very tough at the moment, this is. So I need to get some water through it by the side. The rain holes line up. Does it rub on the drum? Right, we are ready to water test it, however, need a bit more of a clean up. Right, so what I'm going to use is some of this paint stuff again. This is the drawer. Um, a lot of this gunge will just come straight off, as you see the hot water coming right off, but the rest is just mold. Um, unfortunately, it's being a coal felony machine, it means that it was more prone to skip lime scale on there because coal water carries lime scale. And particularly if he's been using liquid, uh, it looks like he's done a lot of low temp washes with all this, but he's never cleaned that out, so that's another thing. Very hot water, so I've got to be very careful. But I know that it's uh, going to soften all that. Never, I never put drawer fronts in dishwashers because uh, it can bleach it or steam it. Because uh, the dishwasher is very hot water. I've seen many people do that. Um, but I knew somebody who sold a machine with that actually. And I knew that they had put the drawer in a dishwasher. So fair play for them to try and look after it because the rest of the machine was in good condition. I think it was a rather candy or something that it did. So I knew by the front it was to rest it is there. Last bits of cleaning, this is the lid off. I like how the tub's got an actual 1200 RPM tub and there's some uh, detergent corrosion there, so we've got a bit of pink stuff here. Um, I always say be careful of using scouring pads for washing machines. You can use it in places out of view, uh, but if you use it on the paintwork, be careful because it will actually uh, scratch the paint off it. It's like sandpaper and someone's beeping. Um, also, if you're using any sort of water here, make sure it's all dried off before you plug the machine in because that could lead to uh, destroying the, the electronics or the board. It is amazing though where dirt actually ends up getting on machines and this is this is like powder and all. So, like I said, the guy had it below a sink. We're looking good, got an hour to left to leave, so we're going to get the Hoover 6 out, put this in, give it a test rinse and see what happens. Filter has been emptied. On the side of a road. So, all right. The first time a Bosch has ever ended up in this house. It's right next to the Hoover Six as well, which uh, kind of were in the same. Well, no, it's 2005. That's 2001. They probably weren't in the same showroom together, anything. But this wiped the guy all the way in. Oh yes. That actually looks all right there. Funny thing is. When the WA64 died, we were looking at getting a Bosch. Now one of the, this has a foot that I can't adjust. That actually looks, that actually looks nice there. We're level, we're in. Uh, let's get this on the rinse. Test that water seal. Turn it down to rinse, freshen up. Look at that. Uh, I'll only do an 800 spin. But yeah, you can have infinite spin on that. <laughs> can do 770. Right. It's got a wash spin. Drain. Maybe do maintenance wash tonight. I've got that off tomorrow anyway. That's a drain. He's a bit more cleaning up on the dial. Apart from that, it's fairly clean. Oh, I need to do the door, don't I? Yeah, I'll take that off as well. Off there. It's a long pump up. <sighs> got there in the end. Oh, I've got to find out where the dustpan and brush has gone to. <laughs> oh, God.
that's good. And also rinse out all the uh, cleaning products in the drawer. So it might be a bit sudsy. I mean, these don't really use them before, I don't think, all in some, you might know. Why, that feels fast though. It's fast fumble though. Let's have a look. I always know there's a bit of a gap between the door and the, <coughs> the seal at times. Mm -hmm. that is, I always say that is quite a gap that it has though. <coughs> but then I remember that happening with a lot of these boxes that I see. There are little bits floating in that, in that water. This would be like a pre-rinse. Fair play. This one's alright. Why? Because it hasn't come back. To uh close. To washing uh dishwasher tablet uh from one dose. Videoing and I'm talking about the postman. That's it, one dose there. Kill cool. Set that to cotton's 90 degrees. I'm not even going to do a. We can have infinite spin on this, infinite variable spin, so I don't know what we could do it there. I'm at 800 for that, and 51, I don't need anything else. Oh, my tablet fell in there. Look, can you see it? Yeah, I'll get it. Yeah, it's my last thing. You're filling up holes for over here. Yeah, look, everyone was saying about the stickers on it, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Are you going to take it off? You'd have to, wouldn't it, when it gets sold? Yeah, as long as I can keep it. That's uh, Morrison Saver tablets in there. like a murky colour to it. A crappy colour? Yeah. Let me know when you're filming so I'll stop. I am filming already. That's why I've just said to come. And obviously these look like they have got a bit of play in the door there. But what, are we going to get flooded? No. Oh god, you can really smell the uh, thing off the um, acid in that. Uh, smell the acid in that um, kill rock. You can't wash clothes with that. It's just scaler. Put a bit of spinning. Some final spin the maintenance wash. Right, that's the maintenance wash done. So we see we do get a bit of sandy water there. Probably because the uh, seal is still very hard. Oh. Mm. Interesting smells coming out of that. Mainly the, the scaling chemicals. Just give another wipe around the cabinet. It's causing little imperfections here and there. Next step is to get this door off the hinge, clean the hinges themselves, and then take this apart and get um, separate the two bits, clean.
clean around the grass and then that'll be fine. There's the door in three parts. Door glass doesn't need much, but this is the main bit. Um, obviously you've got the usual lime scale on there. Most of this has been cleaned off during the maintenance wash, but the rest of it here is what we're getting at. All those are laundries put, uh, put in. Hot water from there, yeah. Alright, I forgot the way onto the Bosch's. So we couldn't clean the hinge fully, but we got most of it off, as you can see on the tower down there, some stuff. Just securing that in place. We've got the machine as clean as we can to the best of our ability. I see. These torques, bolts, and uh, screws are a nightmare because even though I've got the correct size um, attachment for them, they don't go on so smoothly. Yeah. One Bosch, Classics 1200 Express, ready for service. I'll wrap that one up there guys, hope you enjoyed that little video. Well, an unexpected, the mach uh, unexpected machine to the temporary machine list because this is something that I would normally consider collection wise but it's the WFO um, 2865 I think is the one I want. It's the Excel 1400 Express version with the time delay here. Thank you very much for watching and don't forget to keep it supreme and go with the flow.